What's up party people? My name is Daryl Wilson and today in this video I'll show you how to create a WordPress website step by step for complete beginners. Now many users who watch my channel are already very experienced with WordPress but there are a lot of new subscribers who watch my channel and want to learn how to use WordPress for the very first time. So today in this video I'll walk you through the basics of WordPress. And the popularity of WordPress is growing. WordPress now controls up to 40% of the entire internet, making it the most popular platform for building websites in the world. It's completely drag and drop, really easy to use, and anyone can get started with it. Today, I'll walk you through how to build your website. You'll have access to various templates and pre-made starter websites to help build your new WordPress website. I'll show you how to pick a pre-made template, adjust the color, change the text, and turn this pre-made template into your new website for your business or personal use. And the best part, everything is drag and drop, so you don't need to have any experience or knowledge of coding to build your new website. You're gonna love your new website, and I'll walk you through how to build your own step-by-step -step in this WordPress tutorial. First, let me give you guys a little history of WordPress. WordPress first came out in 2003 as a blogging platform. This was the first version of WordPress and it was based on another software platform called B2 Cafe Log, which was actually abandoned by the original developer. In 2005, WordPress came out with WordPress themes. WordPress themes set the overall structure of your website and gave you more customization options. Just a few years later, plugins were developed and added, giving WordPress websites different functionalities. This started the idea that WordPress could be more than just a typical blogging platform. In 2010, Automatic was founded by the co-founder of WordPress. During this time, many new developers joined the WordPress ecosystem and WordPress products were emerging on the market. With these advancements, WordPress can now be used also as an e-commerce platform and other types of websites shying away from the original blogging platform it once was. During this time, WordPress only had about a 10% market share for websites on the internet. In 2015, WordPress version 4 came out. This version of WordPress mainly focused on the theme customizer, creating a really nice interface for users and stabilizing WordPress as a platform with authority. During this time, Automatic acquired WooCommerce, which was the main e-commerce platform for WordPress. At this time, WordPress now had a 23% market share of all websites on the internet. And fast forward to 2022, WordPress is now the most popular CMS platform on the internet for making websites. Developers from all around the world make products dedicated to WordPress. WordPress offers more than 55,000 free plugins in the WordPress repository and 31,000 WordPress themes. And as of today, WordPress powers 43% of all websites on the internet. WordPress as of today is the most popular CMS in the world. To give you a better understanding, WordPress controls 43% of the entire internet. It's only followed by one of its competitors, Shopify, which has a market share of 4% then followed by another competitor, Wix, which has a market share of a mere 1.9%. So if you're wondering why everyone's using WordPress and you wanna know how to use it, today I'll walk you guys through on how to make a WordPress website step-by-step. -step. In this video, I'll walk you through how to get web hosting and a domain. I'll walk you through how to install WordPress and get your website online. I'll then introduce you all to the WordPress dashboard and show you how it works. I'll show you how to create pages and blog posts for your website. I'll walk you through installing a WordPress theme and explain how they work. After that, I'll be showing you what a WordPress plugin is. With plugins, you can build anything on your website. You can build anything from a basic website, an e-commerce website, a booking website, a real estate website, a multi-vendor e-commerce website like Amazon, or even a hotel booking website. And the best part is you don't need any experience and I'll walk you through this whole tutorial step-by-step. -step. So let's first go to step one and get web hosting. To create a website, you do need to get your domain and web hosting. This means a company will host your website 24 hours a day and make sure it's properly running. This will also make sure your website's online and people can visit your websites. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast cloud web hosting. And welcome to namehero.com. Now I've been recommending namehero.com for years and people love it. Uh, this week alone, I've had zero downtime with Name Hero, so you guys will have a reliable website. And also, my websites load at under one second with Name Hero. So we do test these servers to make sure that you guys do get the best web hosting possible. Now, once you guys are here, you'll click on Get Started Now, and then it'll bring you to four different pricing options. So we have the Starter Cloud, the Plus Cloud, the Turbo Cloud, and the Business Cloud. Now, I personally recommend the Plus Cloud if you guys are just getting started out, like if you're just getting your feet wet for the very first time. But for those of you who have been using WordPress for a while and you want to upgrade and get some more performance, 
I would definitely go with the Turbo Cloud because with the Turbo Cloud, you guys do get the new NVMe storage, which does just give you a little bit more performance with your website. So you'll go ahead and pick a package that works best for you and your budget. And then once you guys uh, figure your package out, you'll go ahead and click on order now. All right, and here you're going to enter in your domain name. So this is the name of your new website. So uh, portfoliowebsite.com or you know mynewswebsite.com or whatever, whatever niche that you're building, you'll go ahead and put it here. So I'll just put it in tutorialdomain1.com and see if that's available. All right, cool, it's available. Now I know it takes time to figure out the domain of your website, so you know, give it some time. You know, It does take some thought for your new websites. Uh, once you guys figure it out, you guys will click on continue. All right, cool, so next we have the billing cycle and we have three years, two years, and one year. Now personally, I'd recommend one year. You guys do get a large discount and this does give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. However, if you guys are feeling very confident I would recommend going with the two or three year plan. You guys do get the uh, deal the longer you sign up for. So uh, it really depends on your budget. But uh, once you guys select a billing cycle, we'll scroll down. And uh, I don't recommend any of these upsells personally. You can do this with free plugins. So yeah, you guys don't need those. And then we do get a free SSL with Name Hero. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once you guys select your billing cycle, we will then click on continue. All right, next we have the domain configuration. Now I personally recommend the ID protection guys. This will protect your personal information from spammers and people trying to sell you SEO packages and Viagra and all sorts of nonsense. Whenever you guys get those weird emails in your inbox, it's generally because they found your domain online. So this will actually protect you so you don't get spam in your inbox. So go ahead and click on ID protection and then click on continue. And look at that, for a year of hosting, you're paying less than $100, you're paying only 70 bucks. You guys can also go the cheaper routes and get the cheaper plan if you're on a really tight budget, but I think this is a great deal for web hosting for the entire year for this specific performance. So you guys are getting a reliable and a fast server for this price, so it's definitely worth it. So uh, go ahead and scroll down, just keep scrolling. Now you're gonna go ahead and fill out your billing information here, so your first name, your last name, uh, additional information. You'll put in your password and also a support pin. So this would be the pin that uh, they would use to verify that it's you. And then also we have uh, payment methods, so you can pay with PayPal, Coinbase, which is cryptocurrency, and credit card. Here you'll go ahead and put in your payment details. And if you guys do want to get their spam or their emails, they actually send some pretty good emails, guys. I'm not gonna lie, they have some cool uh, promotional offers. You'll go ahead and check that box. And then you'll, of course, uh, agree to their terms of service, right? I'm sure you guys are all gonna read uh, this here, right? You guys are all gonna read this. I don't think anyone ever reads any of this stuff, but uh, yeah, you'll go ahead and uh, check the terms of service. And once you guys have checked out, I will meet you guys in the customer portal. All right, and welcome to your new dashboard. So this is your current dashboard. As you guys can see, I had many different packages, many domains, and I also have tickets with Name Hero, and they really helped me out with all of my problems. So this is just your interface. On the left side, you can see your hosting packages. These are your current domains. You can always register a new domain. Uh, also billing. So if you wanna see your payments or you wanna add funds or you wanna adjust your payment methods, you can do that here. And also the support. So if you guys run into something weird, I know with websites, things just kinda get weird sometimes. Uh, you guys can always open a ticket here and they will help you out with all of your problems. And they are pretty fast. I mean, I think maybe under one hour, they can help you guys with all your problems. So once you guys are here, let's go ahead and install WordPress onto our new domain. You'll first click on My Cloud. Now here we have hosting packages. Now you should probably only have one here. So just go ahead and click on your hosting package. And next we're going to see this Login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on Login to cPanel. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and install WordPress onto our domain. So up here, we'll type in WordPress. Here we go, we have WordPress Manager by Softaculous. We'll click on this. All right, and from here, we're going to install WordPress. You guys can see I have many installations of WordPress already, but right here, you'll click on Install. And now we're going to look for the domain that we purchased. So right here, you have the Choose Domain section. So you'll probably see your domain that you purchased. I'll just go ahead and select this one, but you're going to select the domain that you purchased. And for the protocol, make sure this is HTTPS which is the SSL. Now for indirectory, make sure nothing is here. All right, I don't know why that's there by default, but oops, <laughs> whoops. 
But uh, make sure nothing is there because that will install your domain onto like yourwebsite.com slash something and you don't want that there. It, it, yeah, just don't have that there. Make sure that's make sure that's empty. Now for the admin username, go ahead and give yourself an admin username and a password. And this is what we are going to use to log into the website. So whenever you want to build your website, you're going to use these login credentials. So make sure you write these down. I'll just put admin. Never put pass, guys. Uh, make sure this is something unique. I'll just put uh, paddywhack. And your admin email. Make sure that this is an email that you have access to because when you forget your password, they will send this information to your email. So I'll put in my, my Gmail account here, my famous PC hoarder, which I do get tons of spam. And below that, you can always select your language. We can always adjust the language as well uh, inside the WordPress dashboard, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. And we're gonna keep scrolling down here to the bottom. They have these other themes they want us to use, but uh, we're not gonna use these. And right here, you'll click on install. Yeah, they said three to four minutes. That was not three to four minutes, right? Now here we have install WordPress, and this is the administrative URL administrative URL. So just go ahead and click on this link and this will log you in to your website. All right, and this is your new WordPress dashboard. This is where all the magic happens. Now, if you wanna see what your website looks like right now, at the top left, you'll click on uh, visit site. And this is your new current WordPress website. So it's using a default WordPress theme. Uh, not to worry, we're gonna make it look really good. So let's go back to our dashboard here. Now, before we go ahead and start designing the website, I first want to adjust some of the general settings. So over here, we have the users. Uh, let's go ahead and click on profile. Now, the first thing was we can change the background color here. Uh, I do like midnights. I feel like this is a lot easier on the eye and it's easier to see stuff. But uh, there's also modern and there's also sunrise and there's coffee, which is really ugly. And there's also uh, ocean, which is just as ugly. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go to midnight. And now we're gonna scroll down here. And this is the email that you guys will um, put in here that you have access to. So if you guys do forget your password, uh, this is where your WordPress password will be sent to. So make sure you have access to this specific uh, email. And then we'll scroll down. And if you guys do wanna change your password over here, you can click on set new password, and then you can uh, set a new password to log in to your WordPress websites. And then once you're done with all that, we will then click on update profile. All right, cool. Now over here, we're gonna to go to settings and click on general. Now I'm just gonna introduce some of these general settings really quick. So if you guys do want to adjust the site language in the back end of your WordPress website, over here under site language, you can change this to pretty much any language. I think they have like every language in the world. It's pretty crazy. I don't even know. I don't even know what, what a lot of these are, you know, and they also have different dialects and stuff like that. So it's really cool. Uh, so you can go ahead and select your language there. You can adjust the date format and also the time format if you choose to do that. And then once that's done, you'll click on save changes. All right, now on the left side, also under settings, you're gonna see this permalinks option. Go ahead and click on permalinks. And for the common settings, you're gonna change this to post name. Now, the reason why we do this is because uh, when you go to a website, it says like yourwebsite.com slash about us, right? Or dash contact us. So this is where uh, post name is useful. And it's also the correct method for SEO purposes. These other permalink settings are really ugly. They're really confusing. And it's just, it's just unnecessary. I mean, this one shows the date. Like, why would you want to show the date? <laughs> you know, so. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and go down here and click on save changes. All right, and now let's go back and click on dashboard. So now let me go ahead and show you guys how you can log in and log out of your WordPress website. So you can pretty much work on your website from any location. I'll go ahead and go over here and click on log out. I'll then get rid of all this uh, permalink up here and press enter. So this would be your domain, right? So this is your current domain. You'll go to your domain and then you'll type in dash WP dash admin and then press enter. You'll then go ahead and put in your username or the email that you guys use sign up with WordPress along with your password. And once you enter all that information, you'll then click on login. And that's it. That's how you guys can log in and log out of your WordPress website. All right, cool. So you guys got your domain and hosting and we went through the general settings. Now in this next section, I'll be walking you guys through how to uh, import a demo website. And then we'll go ahead and build a website using a drag and drop builder. You guys ready? Let's get started. All right, and the next thing that we're gonna do is that we are now going to install a WordPress theme. So over here we have appearance and we're gonna click on themes. And up here, we're gonna click on add new. 
Now, before we install a WordPress theme, I quickly want to explain what a WordPress theme is and what it does. First, let's talk about what is a WordPress theme. Every website you make with WordPress requires a specific WordPress theme. Without getting too techy, a WordPress theme is a general style and layout of your current website. Each WordPress theme has different options in the theme customizer. The options can range from a header and a footer builder, different blog post layouts, controlling the width of your website like a blocks or a full width, or specific e-commerce features like product layouts or different shop page layouts. A WordPress theme generally controls the layout and style of your current WordPress website. A WordPress theme does not build the website itself, but it's more of an outside shell for the page builders and a starting point to build your WordPress website. Feel free to check out many of the WordPress themes to find a style that fits for you and your WordPress website. You guys got that? So to summarize, a WordPress theme controls various parts of the website that the page builder normally does not. And each of these themes, they, you know, they have different features than one another. One might offer a different header uh, layout than another. And another one might offer different blog post templates uh, versus another. Now for this specific theme, we're just going to use the Astra theme right here. You guys can search for it by going to this box and typing in Astra and pressing enter. All right, and once you guys uh, see Astra, you'll then click on install. Look at this one right here, Octo. Oh, what is that? <laughs> it looks looks cute, you know, but I have no idea. I have to be honest, guys. I have I haven't tried any of these themes. Like, there's so many of them. But uh, once you guys are done installing it, we'll then click on activate. All right, cool. So now that we've done that, uh, on the left side under appearance, you're gonna see this new Astra options. Go ahead and click on Astra options. Now, what we're gonna do is that we are now going to import a starter template. So to have access to these starter templates, we first need to install the importer plugin. So right here, click on install importer plugin. All right, so now that we installed the importer plugin, we're greeted with this video. I hate these videos that autoplay. I just find them really irritating. But uh, we're gonna click on build your website now. Now here we have page builders, but before we select a page builder, I quickly wanna explain what the role and responsibility of a page builder is. All right, let's talk about page builders. Like we talked about earlier, WordPress themes are the shell of your website, allowing you to control the structure and page layout of your WordPress website. A page builder designs the website and creates the actual website itself. With a page builder, you can add images, text, colors, rows, and columns. For every WordPress website, you do need to have some sort of page builder in order to design the website. There are several page builders to choose from, and many of these page builders are completely free. There is Gutenberg, Gutenberg is the default builder with WordPress. Elementor, which is the current leading free page builder for WordPress. Brizzy, which is great for beginners. And Divi, which is one of the most popular premium page builders for WordPress. To be honest, there is really no best page builder. I do believe whatever works best for you and your WordPress website is the page builder that you should choose. You need to spend your own time to go through each builder and see which one works best for you, as they do have all different styles and benefits. For this video, we will be using Elementor. This is the most popular free page builder for WordPress with tons of integrations, templates, and resources to use. So to summarize, that is what a page builder is. It's essentially needed to build your WordPress website and gives it the overall look and style of your website. So that's page builder summed up. You guys will need to have a page builder in order to build out your website. And we're gonna select the Elementor page builder, which is the most popular WordPress page builder as of this moment. So let's click on Elementor. So I selected the page builder and on this page, if it does this right here where it's blank, just go ahead and refresh this and then the starter templates should display. All right, there we go, cool. So uh, once you guys uh, refresh the page, you guys will then see that you have access to uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of templates to choose from. And a lot of these are free and there are also pro uh, templates. So the ones with the, like, uh, just like with the standard template is free. However, if it does have this premium option at the top right, you guys will need to upgrade to the pro version, but there are still tons and tons of templates in the free version. And you guys can pick off categories, right? So there's like personal, there's like professionals, uh, there's personal sites. And then you guys can also so, like select between a uh, personal sites. Like if you're one of those motivational speakers or these guys who are just trying to make money and start those uh, Ponzi schemes. And also we do have community. So if you want to you know, create some sort of community websites, uh, Astra has everything. However, the one that we're going to install, we're gonna go up here at the box and we're going to type in travel, T-R-A-V-E-L. And we're gonna see this one right here called travel and tourism. Now I'm gonna click on travel and tourism. 
Now we're going to use this template to help us practice and learn how to use the page builder, but it doesn't really matter what you're trying to accomplish. And I just want to show you guys something here. We have the hotel website, right? However, if we make some changes, it now turns into a corporate website, like a business website. And then also we made this template here, and this is like a dog website or a animal website. So it doesn't really matter what the actual template shows. You can simply just swap the images, change the text, and you can turn any websites into any kind of website you want. So I'm going to open this back up right here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to skip and continue. We'll talk about logos a little bit later. I'll show you guys a really cool website where you can get some really cool logos for your website. So right here, I'm going to click on skip and continue. And what's also cool is that you can actually pick a color scheme, right? Now this will change a lot of the background overlays and it'll also change the buttons. So all the buttons on the actual websites will be adjusted to whatever color that you want. But um, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to leave it as a default color. And also here we have the change fonts. So you guys can also uh, change the fonts right here of whatever you want to change it to. Uh, but I'm just going to leave mine blank. But you guys can obviously see that you can, you know, change the font here and, and see which one works best for you. But you guys can use the page builder and get access to more fonts. So don't worry about that. But I'm going to just refresh it back to the normal setting. And then I'm going to click on continue. Here you guys can choose to subscribe to their email box, but if you don't want to, no problem. Just go over here and click on submit and build my website. All right, cool. So now Astro is going to go ahead and import this starter templates on our website. So just give it like a minute. It takes, it's really fast. All right, congratulations. We have now built our websites at the top right here. Just click on view your websites. All right, cool. So this is our current WordPress website. And what we can do is just kind of scroll down here, make sure everything imported correctly. And it looks like everything did. So yeah, congratulations. You guys now have a full five page website in a matter of what, like 20 or 30 seconds. So uh, it's really fast and really amazing what you guys can do with WordPress. Now let's talk about some frequently asked questions from WordPress users. The first one is, can I switch between one press theme to another? What will happen to my website? Well, if you switch between one WordPress theme to another, your website will stay intact. Because remember, the website was built by the actual page builder, which is a separate entity from the actual theme. However, when you switch between themes, you might see that uh, the plugin, I'm sorry, the website might be a little distorted and it might look a little weird. So you'll have to go to the new theme customizer options and you'll have to adjust the website accordingly. You don't lose any of the work that you've done. So just remember that you can switch from any theme to another and not lose any of your work. So now let's go ahead and design this page. At the top right here, you're going to see this edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a 10 minute crash course on how to use this builder and explain how everything works. Uh, I'm first going to close this little navigator. So on the left side, you can see that we have specific elements and you guys can drag and drop these elements anywhere onto the page. And then we can always delete these elements anytime you want. So what you guys can do is you guys can actually go to the website and you can uh, drag and drop elements anywhere you want onto the websites and just change it however you want, right? Change this to whatever, right? And we can keep scrolling down the website and to get back to those elements, we'll just click on those little dots right there. And then you can continue to drag and drop elements anywhere you want on this page. However, before we do that, let's first talk about how to make a really nice looking homepage. So over here, let's just say, for example, we want to turn this into some sort of corporate website, right? So we're going to change this. So I'm going to double click on this to my new business, business website. Now on the left side, we can see content, right? So the content controls the actual content of the actual elements. The style tab will always adjust the color and the topography and also add in some special effects like a text shadow, which you can see we have the shadow now and other various features. The advanced section will always control the actual position of the actual elements. It'll also add in some really cool things like motion effects where you can uh, animate specific elements in. For example, we have this zoom in, ooh, that is ugly, or zoom down or zoom in right. So uh, yeah, they do have uh, tons of different motion effects to choose from. And they do have other options like here, like masking and also how to add little borders around every um, element. But uh, that is what these three options are for every element in a nutshell. Now let's say, for example, I want to adjust this uh, font, right? Because I don't really, you know, we, I told you guys earlier, we can change this font, right? Let's go over here to style and go to topography. 
Here we can change the font, right? I kind of like uh, Poppins. I think Poppins is a really good font, guys. Uh, Poppins is a nice font. But see, the thing about Poppins, it only looks good when it's bold, right? So if I bold this, now it looks more friendly. You know, I don't, I don't know how to describe that, you know? Uh, also over here, we have other options, like make everything uppercase. Uh, we can also make this italicized or normal and also add in like an underline or just any decoration you want to this text, all right? Now, if you guys want to adjust the size of this, we can increase the size of it like that, right? And just change it to pretty much anything that we want. All right, so now that we know how to uh, adjust this, we can do the same thing for this column. So over here, we can delete this. Now, you guys can delete the text in this box. However, you can also delete the text on the actual page. So uh, this is some demo contents, or we can write that over here. Just an example, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, here, here we go. Just an example, right? So we can always adjust the text uh, from the uh, box over here or for this column here. And then also we have the button. Now remember the button right here, this will control the actual position, right? But we can also change from book your stay to book now, right? So if you guys wanna make like a booking website or something else, uh, we can change the text. And then also we'd have our link, right? So this is like, you know, darylwilson.com or just put the link of wherever you want them to go to. And over here under style, this is again where we can control the actual color and also the topography. For example, here we have the text background as white, but we can change that to like red, right? So we have this red background. Um, and also we can change it on hover. So here you can see that when I hover over it, it turns white. So under the hover option, I can change that to something like black, right? So I'm saying, you know, if I hover over it, I want it to turn black, you know, like that. And it's also hover animation where if they hover over it, it can shrink like that, you see that? But we might wanna change this text color to hover, you know, cause I think white makes more sense. You can see it. So that's just an approach if you want to have some sort of animation there uh, when people hover over it. But let's go over here and click on normal. Now you guys might notice we have this white little border here and we can take this border off, you know, saying, I don't really want a border. You know, I just think the border's ugly. And as a result, we have no border now. And over here we have topography. So this is again, where you guys can change the size of the text. That will obviously change the size of the button as well. And then you can always adjust the font here, just like we did previously. Now, let's say for example, you guys, you know, you, know, made, you made the button very ugly, right? And it looks terrible. Uh, over here at the bottom under the history, I can actually go back, right? So over here, let's just go back and find out, you know, where we actually made some of these uh, changes and there you go. And to go back to the, um, the builder elements, we'll click on the squares. So that's how you guys can always go back to any part of the uh, building process if you choose. So now that we changed the actual text, let's change this background. You know, we got the, this background is not business, right? So over here, we have these six dots. Now you guys can see the, the outline here. Uh, this little circle, I'm sorry, the square will control this entire section. So over here, we have style, right? And we have a few options. We have classic, gradients, video, and slideshow. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And now we have no background. So if I first wanna add like a color, I can add in a color here to my background, right? And uh, yeah, that's cool. Or we can say, you know what? I wanna add a gradient. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and clear this and then go to gradients. And with the gradient, what we can do is that we can apply two colors, right? So we have this uh, red color and we also have this teal color. So now it's a gradient. And then we can also choose the angle of this gradient. So if you wanna give it this really nice uh, gradient effect, we can also do that as well. And then also we have YouTube videos where you can go ahead and insert a link to a video and then this will play the actual video. So that makes sense. Now let's go back over here to classic. And with classic, what I wanna do is I wanna actually insert an image. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to clear this. And then I'm gonna click on choose image. Now I have demo images for all of you guys in the description below of this video that you guys can download for free and that will help you guys follow along in this tutorial. All right, so let's go over here to, uh, we have upload files and we're gonna click on select files now. Now let's say for example that you guys have files that you want to upload. You'll just simply take those images and you'll select them and then you'll click on open. And now it's going to upload all of these images to the website. So if you guys do have images you want to upload, well, now's the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this like one minute. All right, cool. So those images have finally uploaded. Now I also included these two screenshots and I'm gonna go ahead and just give you an example here. So here you can see we have this dog website, right? 
and now it's a corporate website. If you guys notice here, we changed nothing about this website. All we did was we swapped the images and we completely changed the look and feel of the website. So I did include these um, images for you, but we're gonna make this website right now because I think this looks pretty cool and it's pretty practical, right? So let's go back to our current website. And the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna upload this image right here. It is the home one banner and then click on insert media. All right, cool. Now we can always adjust the position of this image, right? So if you guys do have images that you guys want to position, uh, we can change the position of it with all these different position styles. There's also this option for attachment. Now what this does is that this actually creates this parallax effect. So you can see here how the actual image stays with us as the user scrolls. Uh, we're gonna use this again a little bit later, but uh, that's a really cool feature. And then also there's just the normal scroll feature and then there's just like the default, right? So that makes sense. And here we have the size and I wanna keep this to cover. Cover will force the image to cover the entire screen, which I really do like. So you can change this text to pretty much anything, right? So maybe for example, we're like a loan business or something, you know, like get a new loan for your house. You know, it could really be anything, you know? So we can see that, uh, you know, we can make this website anything with this picture because it's very broad, right? They're happy, they're energetic, they're exciting. So uh, yeah, let's just say, for example, they're getting a new loan for a house. You know, who knows? I, I don't know, this is whatever. So let's go back to that section here. So I'm gonna right click and click on edit section. Whenever I do that, it'll take me back to this previous section. And one, one other option I do wanna introduce you guys to is the background overlay. So if you do wanna add some sort of background overlay here, uh, we can do that. So for example, if you wanna add like a teal uh, background overlay, you can see that we can make this teal and then we can increase the size of that, um, of that overlay. So I do like the overlay effect. I think it's pretty cool, but uh, I'm actually not going to use it. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. We have now made a really nice uh, homepage here. And as you guys can see, you can turn this website into pretty much any website that we want. Now that we've created the homepage, let's go ahead and scroll down here and let's talk about these other sections. So I'm gonna open this back up. Now over here, we have this image, right? I'm gonna right click on this and just delete this image. I don't really want it. And we can do the same thing for this one right here. I'm gonna right click and also click on delete. Now let's say for example, you guys do want to add an image to your websites. Over here we have image and I'll just drag and drop this. So you can see here how I drag this image icon below the text, but I want it above it. So all I have to do is click on this pencil and then drag and drop it. And here we have this little blue line. We're just gonna drop the image right there. And on the left side, we're gonna click on choose an image. Now, before we actually use the image that I gave you guys, I wanna also offer you guys free images from Pixabay. So with the Astro theme, they actually have an API that allows you to pull up all of these images from Pixabay. If you guys are at work, you can click on save search because I do believe Pixabay might have like some like modeling pictures that are very provocative. So if you're at work, yeah, just make sure to turn that on. But uh, over here we have orientation. So if you want like a vertical picture, something that, that goes down more, you can select vertical and then you'll see that we have these vertical uh, pictures. So I'll just give you guys an example. I'm gonna click on this uh, flower rose and then I'll click on insert media. And there you go. Now we have this image and it is a little big so we can always adjust the size here to something, you know, a little bit smaller, you know, or a little bit bigger, you know, something like that. You guys can also go over here and go to custom. So if you guys feel like you want to uh, customize these images into a, a specific size, we can always do that as well. So maybe like 500 by 500. And there you go. Now the image fits a little bit better, right? So that's if you guys want to use images from Pixabay. But I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna delete this. Now I'm going to re-add my uh, image here, choose the file. And then I'll select the image I use for my demo website, which was, I believe it was uh, this gentleman here or this group picture, I don't know what you call it. So uh, this one here. And then I'll do the same thing on the right side. So I'll go over here to the elements and drag and drop this. I'm gonna delete this, you know, this it, it has to go, you know, you're fired. And we're gonna go ahead and change this one also to, oh, okay, we gotta switch this over here, okay. To this, uh, looks like this beautiful girl and this uh, this guy working together, all right? So we got the, uh, where, where, where are they? The beautiful girl and the guy, here they are. 
All right, cool. And then obviously you'd want to change this to like, uh, you know, we are the leading digital marketing agency, you know, or something like that. You can always drag in more elements if you want to add more on the page, like you can add like a bar or something. Uh, for example, we have the progress bar, which you can like show them like uh, your skills. And then you can go ahead and adjust this as needed. But I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this here. Now, let's say, for example, you guys do want to add like another button or you want to add some other text, but you don't want to have to use these elements all over again. I want to take this button here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate this. So now that I've duplicated that button, I'm going to take this button, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to drag and drop it over here. And then this can be something like, you know, visit our visit our contact page or we can add something else there. So that's how we can duplicate elements as well. Now, let's go ahead and scroll down here. So next we have this section and this can be something like our services, our staff, and we can change these images into pretty much anything that we'd want. So over here, I'm going to put like our main services. And for these images, I'm just going to choose another image here. We're going to pick a really nice one. There we go. And I'll insert that. And the same thing for this one, I'll insert this other uh, coffee bag, right? And then also for this one, we're going to insert this uh, I don't know, guys, what is that a hand? <laughs> it's like a book in a hand. And you know, coffee, coffee drink. And this one be like, you know, cool book, cool book. And then this one would be like our, you know, I, is that uh, I don't even know what that is yellow hand. Yeah, I'll put a question mark here, you know. So yeah, that's how we can adjust this specific section and make it look really nice. Now let's keep scrolling down here. Now we also have this section here. However, guys, this is a lot, right? And I don't think that I need this on my website. So to delete an element, we can go over here and delete this section. Now I just want to clarify this section, this X right here will actually delete this box and this X will delete the entire box. So let's do that. I'm going to click on delete section and it's gone. Now let's say again that you guys did that on accident at the bottom right. We can go to history. And then just re-add that again and you know it's just like new right but i'm gonna go ahead and delete that now let's say for example you guys want to add in your own section right you want to add in more to this page and you don't want to use the elements over here we have the add section and then we have a few options we have this plus the templates and the blocks we're going to use all three so not to worry we'll get to that First, let's click on the plus, and now we have columns, right? So we have one, two, three, four, yada, yada, yada. Let's just select a three column row, okay? Now I'm gonna click on the little elements here. And let's say, for example, I wanna add in like my staff, right? Or I wanna add in, you know, a portfolio. So let's scroll down over here, and we're gonna take a look at the general, right? Now with the general, we have the image box, which means we can add like a picture of our staff, put the name, whatever. And if you guys want to go have access to other elements, you just click on the elements tab again, and then just drag and drop any elements that you want. Now, these ones right here are pro elements. So if you guys do want to upgrade to Elementor Pro, I will leave a link to Elementor Pro in the description below of this video. However, you don't need to upgrade. And personally, if you're brand new to WordPress, I do not recommend upgrading because you probably won't use all the features that they offer anyways. Uh, I'm just being real, like I'm just being honest. So what I wanna do is I wanna turn this into a uh, portfolio section. So I'm gonna take these social icons here and I'm also gonna drag them right there. So the first thing I wanna do is change this image box. Now guys, you can turn this into anything, right? You can turn this into a staff, a testimonial, a uh, whatever you wanna do, right? So if we scroll down, we're gonna see these images that were automatically loaded for us uh, from Astra. So I'm gonna grab this guy here and click on insert media. So you can turn this into like a testimonial or even a staff. So for example, this can be Daryl Wilson, right? And this can be the testimonial, or you can do something like, this was amazing. And then this would be like the actual description and then the testimonial of the person. So there's really no right or wrong way to use any element at all. Whatever element that you're gonna use, uh, there's really no limit. The sky is the limit with this builder. So I'm gonna change this to Daryl Wilson. And then this would obviously be some description about the actual person. Now, I don't want this box, right? I don't like this box. I feel like it's too, it's, it doesn't look good. So over here under the style section, I can actually add border radius. So now I'm going to add some border radius. So now it's circle. And if I want to add a border around that, we can add a cute little border. 
and uh, you know give it a color and so on and so forth. So that's how we can uh, create this little testimonial section. Now, I did a lot of work here, you know, and I don't want to have to do this all over again. So I'm going to duplicate these elements. So earlier we talked about how you can duplicate the actual, um, you know, the actual box itself. However, you can also duplicate rows. So over here, I'm going to go back and delete this. And now I'm just going to delete this whole box because, I mean, we did everything. Why would we just delete, you know, just duplicate one element? That doesn't make much sense. And over here, I'm going to delete this. And then also I will delete this. So that's how we can add a section to our website, right? Pretty cool, pretty simple. Now, also you might notice that we have a lot of, or there's not enough space right here. So maybe I wanna add in more space and we're going to now talk about padding. So over here we have these little dots and let's go to the advanced section. Now padding is space, right? So padding allows space between elements. So I'm going to click this link values together and I wanna add more space to the bottom, right? Cause these are just too close in my opinion. So for the bottom here, I'm just going to add in some space, like 50 pixels. And that's much better, right? And I think that's really cool. Now, when you guys look at all these elements, all of them have padding, right? Everything has padding. So everything is using some sort of space. So now that we know how to make our own sections and stuff like that using the actual, um, the plus section, now let's talk about the Astra starter blocks. And I love these blocks. So over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this. And here we have access to all those templates. However, I don't recommend doing this because obviously these templates have their own color scheme and it just really wouldn't work with our current websites. We can actually use the blocks and with blocks, it gives us access to these blocks, which we can just insert on our websites and they're blank color. So we can adjust the color to whatever color scheme and style that you're trying to accomplish. So over here we have all and have different categories of the blocks. Uh, I'm going to select the call to action here. And then I'll just select uh, this one right here. We'll go ahead and enter this one. And then we're going to now import the block. All right, cool. So now you can see that this block has been added. And then of course we can make some small changes. We would have to change the text and the background color, but you can design this and change it to any style that you want. So that's how you guys can add blocks using the uh, Astro starter blocks. I do recommend it. Now, since this is so ugly, we're just gonna, we're gonna get rid of that. You know, that's gone. So uh, here we go. We have this block section and you guys can add blocks anywhere you guys want on the websites. And then we'll scroll down and obviously these right here are testimonial. So this is just a basic testimonial widget like you guys can see. And if we scroll down to the bottom, if we change the alignment to the left side, you'll see it is the same exact elements, right? So that's what these are. They're just testimonial widgets. And then you guys can mess around with this and I think you guys will understand uh, how to use it just by tinkering around with it. Now let's go over here and delete this and we're gonna scroll down. Now I wanna add a different background image to this one because we are no longer a travel website. So I'm going to right click and click on edit section. And then over here under the style, we're gonna change this to another image. We're gonna pick this one here and then we'll insert media. All right, cool. But there is one thing I do wanna add. I also wanna add the uh, the fixed. So I like this effect that as the user scrolls down, uh, it gives us this notion that, uh, the image is following us. I do like this. So I'm going to go ahead and leave, uh, this style right here on our bottom page. All right. And that is pretty much it for the entire homepage. So congratulations. We uh, made a really nice looking homepage. I'll go ahead and just scroll up here. Now, of course, if you guys do want to save your progress at the bottom left, you'll then click on updates. Now, if you wanna see what your website looks like out of the builder, here we have this preview changes. Just click on preview changes. And this gives us an example of what the website will now look like out of the builder. And it looks great. In fact, it looks like a large corporate website now. You know, we got our main services. Maybe we're creating like some sort of portfolio project for clients and you wanna showcase them. And to be honest, I think this is a great looking website and we made it in just by exchanging some images. So congratulations. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and exit the builder. Over here, we're gonna click on this little hamburger icon and then just click on view page. This will actually get us out of the builder and this is our current live websites of how it looks right now. So congratulations, we have now created a homepage. Hey party people, I wanted to give you guys a big update on a project me and my team are working on. 
Now this is my current website, darylwilson.com. And on this website, we do have free Elementor toolkits that you guys can download for free. And we just got a lot of feedback from users. They really like the kits. So me and my team have decided to open up our own shop. And this is the new Daryl Wilson. Uh, right now, this website is in development and uh, we are currently working on this website, but in a few weeks from now, it'll be live. So you guys will see the live, um, you know, the live version of my website and we're going to be offering toolkits. Now, these toolkits are amazing. We spent a long time designing these kits and on our products page, you can see that we have various toolkits that you guys can take a look at. So we have the demos, you have more details. We also do have free kits. So on this filter here, we're gonna put free kits and then we also have categories here so you guys can search based off category. We also do have many WooCommerce kits. That's one thing that most people don't offer is WooCommerce kits because it is a lot more work, but we decided to create uh, at least 25 of them. But uh, we're gonna be launching this website with probably 150 toolkits and we're gonna be releasing 10 every single month. And just to give you guys an idea of how these look, here's some examples. Now we've decided to actually really get creative here and really push the limits of web design. So you guys can see uh, these websites, you know, they look great. And we have a few different designers. So the websites won't look the same. You know how you go to those websites sometimes and they all look the same. Uh, we have designers, um, you know, from all different backgrounds. So every toolkit's gonna look uh, very different and very unique. That's what I was worried about. I really wanted to create something different yet also that, you know, that looks great at the same time. So here's just an example of some of the toolkits. And as you guys can tell, these toolkits, they look great. You know, we did spend a long time, you know, making these kits. And I don't want to go through every single one of these kits, but uh, I got to be honest, you know, we uh, really did create some really beautiful kits. And these are going to be available uh, on my website that you guys can go ahead and purchase. We don't have a pricing structure just yet. We're still working on that. But uh, in about a month from now, when we release it, it'll all be set in stone. So um, again, these are some of the toolkits that we have designed and they're very unique, you know, like they're not those generic boring templates. We got really creative here. We added a lot of features. Uh, we created just a lot of different designs and different styles that, you know, really aren't out there yet. And um, yeah, you know, uh, I think you guys are gonna really like this. So if you guys do need help with web design, I know getting inspiration and creating your website can be very frustrating. You know, you're probably sitting at the, um, you know, on the computer, just looking at your screen for a while. I know that how, how that is, but uh, we're gonna have all these available um, on my website. So you guys can go ahead and check it out. This is a really neat one right here. You know, we added this vertical uh, bar right here and you can see that we have different products. And you guys can replace this with anything. You know, this can be uh, shoes. This can be anything. You know, we just decided to put bicycles because, you know, we just, you know, it's just demo content, you know. And uh, yeah, there are various toolkits that you guys can go ahead and check out. So this will be live on my website in about a few weeks from now. If you guys go to my website right now, you're going to see the default website. But in about one month, we're going to have the new website launched, which will look something like this right here. And we will have a lot of available toolkits that you guys can use and download on the website. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, make that announcement. Uh, let me know what you guys think about these toolkits. And um, yeah, if you guys have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. But with that said, let's go ahead and go back to the video. Hey guys, let me give you all some design tips for building websites. Now, when you guys are building websites, you guys might want to stick to a color scheme, right? So you want to pick maybe three or four colors and use those throughout your website. The same goes for fonts. You only want to carry like one or two fonts on your website. If you guys do use too many colors or too many fonts, what happens is your identity and your brand sort of gets lost. So you just want to make sure that when you are building websites, you want a solid color scheme and also just stick with a few fonts. Don't get too crazy. Now let's go ahead and next go to the rooms page. Now there's a few things I want to change here. Number one is this permalinks, right? And also the rooms and accommodation and also this background. So we have a little bit of work to do. Not to worry, we're going to make it look really good. Now to change the actual name of the page and also the permalinks, we're first going to click on edit page here. All right, so I'm going to close this notice. And then over here, we're going to change this to uh, like about us, right? This will be like the about us. And over here on the right side, we have permalink. We're going to change this to about. Once we've done that, we'll then click on updates. And then we'll go ahead and view the page. 
So now you can see that the page title is now about us and the permalink is about. Remember earlier in the video how I told you guys to change the permalink to post name? This is why, because now it's a very clean permalink and I think all your visitors will recognize what page they're on. Now let's go ahead and quickly edit this page. So over here, we'll click on edit with Elementor. All right, so we got some work to do guys. We got some work to do. Now I can always click on the little six dots here or I can just right click and click on edit section. And then I'll go over here to style and I want to change this background. You know, we're a, we're a corporate website now. So I'm going to, I'm going to add this one in here. We're going to add this one here. All right. Now, one thing also is I think that we have too much padding, right? I, I believe we have too much space. You know, I, I don't think we need that much space. So over here under the advanced section, I want to reduce this padding on the top to like a hundred, you know, a hundred. And then this, this one also to a hundred, you know, I think that's a little bit more slim and I think that looks a lot nicer. And then also for these images, uh, you know, we, 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 we got to change them, but I think you guys can do that. I did give you guys a lot of the images in the folders. Uh, you guys can go ahead and swap these images. And just in case you guys forgot, I'll give you guys a quick boost. You will click on the image and then you'll click on choose the file, right? Choose the image. And just remember, you can always right click and delete this, right? And then you can add in any elements that you want, even a little video here from YouTube, which you can link the video and then people can play it on your website. So uh, yeah, but you know, guys, I'm lazy. So we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna, uh, there we go, that's good. So now that I've done that, let's click on update. Now let's go over here and we're gonna go back to exit the dashboard. And then we're gonna click on this little, it's supposed to be a WordPress icon. Oh, there it comes, yeah. So here are all the pages that we currently have. So if you guys do want to uh, find out what pages you created or where they are, here is all of the pages. Now this page right here is the privacy policy page and the sample page, and we have not added it to the menu. So these are default pages that are created with WordPress. Not to worry, we'll come back to that in just a little bit. But first let's go back to the amenities section and here we'll click on view. All right, now we're gonna change the amenity section to the services section, because uh, you know we're not we're not a hotel no more. Okay, we're a we're a, a services company or whatever. Right. So first, let's edit the page here, and then we're just going to change the page name. Right. So services, and then also the permalink on the other side, and then I'll click on update. Now let's click on edit with Elementor. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna do one thing different here. So I'm gonna right click, edit section, style, right? And now we're going to add this again, insert media. And now we're going to uh, adjust the actual padding again to 100 to 100, All right? And if we scroll down, we can always adjust these images and make any changes we want, right? Now, let's say for example, you know, we're gonna get rid of this. I don't want this either, that's too much. Too much, too much images for me. All right, let's go ahead and scroll up. Let's say, for example, we adjusted the header, right? And you did a lot of work and you wanna save this layout to use on another page. We're gonna do that. So at the bottom right here, we have this little save options and we're going to save this as a template. And this is just gonna be our website format or a website template. And then I'll click on save. So what I'm basically saying here is I want to reuse this layout later on another part of my websites. Now, when we create another page, we're going to actually import this, but for now, let's just go ahead and close it. And then I'll go ahead and click on update here. All right, and now if you view the page. Now, I also wanna change this uh, title here to services, right? I mean, that was the whole point of this, right? I mean, come on, services. And then I'll click on update one last time. Now let's say for example, I don't want to close everything out and go to the contact page. We can actually use the finder. So over here we have the hamburger menu and we're gonna click on finder. And if you just type in contact and then click on contact, what's gonna happen is that it's going to bring us to the contact page right away and it's going to already enable the builder. So we don't have to keep closing everything and keep viewing the page because that can take, uh, you know, it can be very tedious, right? So with the actual finder elements, you guys can actually go to any part of the website you choose and it's just a much faster and convenient process. Now, what we're gonna do here is that we're actually going to, I'll go ahead and add in the background, you know, just to, just to be consistent. You guys don't have to follow me here. I'm just a perfectionist and I want this to look really good and, and clean and I want everything the same, right? So we're going to add 100 to 100. 
Now, I do wanna talk about this contact form. Now, I personally don't like WP Forms. I find that this contact form rarely actually goes to your email box. I mean, 99% of the time it goes to spam. I have no idea where all these positive reviews come from this contact form because it never works for me. And it's it, there's a lot of better options. So we're gonna go ahead and use a different contact form. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this and we are now going to use a different plugin for a contact form. In fact, I'll just give you guys an example here. I'll go ahead and just give you a little quick little preview here. I'll just type in my name, Daryl at able.com, howdy, howdy and hey. And then I'll click on submit here. So I'm in my Gmail accounts and now you guys can see that in my spam folder, we have this email and it says this is from someone dangerous. Now, to be honest, uh, I always have this problem with this contact form and I don't want this to happen to you guys. So I'm gonna give you guys a different plugin to use that actually gives you a lot more success. So let's go back to the website. All right, so once we're here, we're now gonna go to our dashboard and then we'll go down to plugins and click on add new. For the search plugins, we're gonna type in Forminator. This is actually a really cool plugin. It can actually take payments as well. Form in, there it is. Forminator, like Terminator, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. It, it was just there. I just saw it. Here, I'm going to close this notice. Okay, so this is the one that is we're going to use. It has a lot of really good reviews. And um, I just find that I have the best success rate with this plugin. So let's go ahead and click on install now. And now we're going to click on activate. All right, now the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna disable WP Forms lights because this plugin does not work for me. Let's go ahead and deactivate that. Also, there's this Hello Dolly. I mean, it's this, you see this up here? This is all it does. I mean, I, they're just trolling. You know, the guy's a troll, but I, I don't mind it. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, fine. But I'm gonna deactivate Hello Dolly as well. I, I just don't want it. What is a WordPress plugin? A WordPress plugin is an add-on for your WordPress website. Think of a plugin like applications for your smartphone. With plugins, you can extend the functionality of your existing WordPress website. For example, you can turn your website into a booking website, an e-commerce website, a hotel booking website, or a car dealership website. There is virtually no limit on how flexible you can make your WordPress website, and this is why WordPress has become so popular over the years. Just a tip. Don't install too many plugins, like more than 15, because this can have an impact on the speed of your website, lowering the performance. If you have too many plugins on your website, you might find yourself getting errors and glitches on your site. So to summarize, a plugin can give your website additional features and extend the power and the functionality of your WordPress website. And this is why they are essential to WordPress. Now you guys might notice that all of the WordPress plugins are free in the WordPress repository. However, with every plugin out there, there's usually a pro version. So what developers do here is they offer the free version and see if you like it. And if you want access to all the features, they usually have a pro version that you can purchase on their websites. Now, most developers offer yearly plans for their plugins, but there are some who offer lifetime plans. So that means you only have to purchase it once and you get lifetime access and updates to the plugin. Now, let's say, for example, you guys bought a plugin and then you stop paying for it. What happens? Well, if you guys do decide to purchase a pro plugin and stop paying for it, usually what happens after your subscription's over, you'll stop receiving support and updates for that plugin. You still have access to the plugin, but you just don't get support and updates for that product no more. Now, there are also plugins out there that are only pro plugins. So, for example, on ThemeForce and Code Canyon, you guys might come across WordPress plugins that are only pro and don't have a free version. So, that's another method that some developers follow as well. All right, cool. So, now that you guys are knowledgeable about plugins, let's go ahead and go back to the video. So, now that we have Forminator, let's go over here and click on Settings. Now, on the left side, you're going to see Forminator. Uh, right here, let's just click on Dashboard. And under forms, we're gonna click on create. So now we can create a new form, right? So over here we have contact us. I'll click on continue. And this will just be like the contact form, right? So a new contact form and click on create. So this is the contact form builder, right? And we can change the appearance of this, like the color, we can change the behavior, email notifications, integrations, uh, settings, and so on and so forth. But what I first wanna do here is just adjust the actual uh, fields. So here we have the first name, the email address, the phone number, and the message. But let's say, for example, you wanna add something like, you know, their business address, right? Here you can add specific elements, right? And what I do like here is that you guys can actually take money with this contact form. So this contact form actually integrates with Stripe and PayPal 
and you can even get an e-signature if you guys upgrade to the Pro. But you guys don't need to do that. Let's just select address and click on insert fields. Here we can select what part of the address that we want. I'm just going to say, give me the city and the state. All right, give me the city and the states, and that's it. And then I'll click on apply. And now I'll drag this up here. Give me a little bit more. There we go. Actually, I kind of like this better. I like this split split look, you know. Ah, whatever. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> so uh, now we'll go ahead and click on publish. All right, cool. So now we have this short code. So make sure to copy this short code. And now we're going to insert this on our contact us page. So I have that uh, copied. Let's close this. But before we do that, I also want to tell this website what email that we are sending it from. Now over here under the Forminator, you're going to click on settings. And if we scroll down, you're going to see the sender email address. Just go ahead and put in the email, right? So if this is like admin at, you know, yourwebsite.com, you'll just go ahead and put in the actual email. Now, if you guys do need help actually creating a professional email, I do have a video and I'll put that in the description, which shows you guys how to make a professional business email using Gmail, which is completely free. But I'm just going to use my generic one. I use this one just because people have a lot of problems spelling my name. <laughs> so I'm just like, forget it. I'll just, I've gotten so many lost emails because my name is very hard to, uh, you know, to, to spell. So uh, now that I've done that, I'll click on save settings. And now let's go back to our website and we'll click on contact. And now we'll click on edit with Elementor. All right, now we're gonna scroll down here. And since I deleted this contact form, we're gonna type in short code. So over here, short code, I'll drop that in there. And we're just gonna paste the short code in there like that. And then I'll click on apply. And there it is. So now we have this contact form. Just remember, you guys can always design this contact form in the actual appearance section of the plugin options. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to test this contact form really quick. So I'm gonna click on updates and I will exit out of the builder. And I'm gonna enter in some information. Daryl, uh, Daryl at AOL.com. And then it's gonna be like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. And then I'll click on send a message. It's submitting. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and check my email to see if it has actually sent to my email inbox. And there it is. So there is my email. You guys can see I just received it. It did not go to spam. It went directly into my inbox. I'll go ahead and click on it. And now you can see that we have that message and it was sent from the domain that I'm working on. So darrelltutorial.com. So that's how you guys can get uh, messages from your website with success. So now that we added a contact form, just remember if we scroll down here, we have this other widgets and this is the uh, Google Maps widget. So over here under search widgets, we'll type in Google Maps and you guys can drag and drop this specific element. So for example, I'll just, you know, I'll just delete this just to give you an example, type in Google Maps and then I will drag this in there like that. And then you'll just go ahead and put in your location. So I'll put in like a uh, loss. What's the casino's name here? Uh, is it uh, Caesars? There we go. All right, cool. See, I spelled it wrong. Caesars Palace, right? So I'll just go ahead and put that, uh, you know, put that location. And then you guys can adjust like the zoom and also the height of this so you can zoom in on it and uh, show that it's closer and stuff like that. And then once you're done, you guys can click on updates. And using this module, this is how you guys can showcase your location on your contact page. Now let's talk about disabling plugins. So what happens if you are using a plugin and you do some work with that plugin and then you disable that plugin later? What happens to that work? Well, if you guys do decide to use a plugin and then disable it, all of that work that you've done with that plugin is saved in the database. So you can disable that plugin and then later you can re-enable it and all of the work will be saved in your database. All right, welcome back. So now we're going to create some pages and we're also going to uh, adjust our menu here at the top. Uh, let's go over here to dashboard. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna create a page, right? So we have our current pages and we have the home contact, the uh, about us and these services. We have these two pages and we don't need these pages. So I'm gonna click on these two pages click on bulk actions, move to trash and apply. All right, so now we just have these four pages. Now let's say for example, you guys want to create a new page over here. I'll click on add new. And this will be like our team, right? So our team, I'll go ahead and publish this and publish. And then we'll click on edit with Elementor. 
All right, so now we can start building the websites just like we did before. So we can click on the column section and then we can add in columns. And then from here, we can drag and drop elements as usual. However, I want to actually use that template that we imported previously uh, on the other page. So over here, I'm gonna click on this folder and then we're gonna click on my templates. Now, just a quick little rundown. Uh, you guys might have saw these blocks and everything. These blocks right here, these are uh, from Elementor. However, these blocks, uh, some of these are free and the ones that are put on pro, you guys will need to purchase the pro version. But again, you don't need to purchase the pro as of right now. If you're just getting started out, you really don't need the pro version. Uh, over here, over uh, pages, they have just some other pages that you guys can use, uh, some stuff that they've designed. Personally, I don't think these guys are any good designers. I mean, I'm just a designer myself, so I'm a little competitive. But uh, I have seen some of their designs and I, they're a little questionable in my book. But uh, that is my opinion. If you guys do want to see my layouts, you guys can go to my website. They are completely free. It does not cost you guys anything. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But over here, let's go to templates. And this is a template that we actually uh, saved earlier. So right here, I'll click on insert and then I'll click on apply. All right, so now you can see that we have our page that we created previously. You see why we did that? Now we have everything done already and I just got to change this to something like our team, right? Delete all of this and just put our team. And then we can actually adjust this. So instead of actually having amenities, I can say, you know what? I want to delete all of this and I'm going to uh, put in a new section here and I'll use the Astro blocks. And what I'll do is I'll actually make this whole page using the blocks. So the first thing I want to do is find like the team section and here I can just insert like this heading of this section, right? Makes sense. I don't know why there's like three, you know, just click on import block. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's like a bug or glitch or something. I have no idea, but uh, there we go. Now we imported this section and then you can build it as you wish. And I'll just keep deleting this other parts of the website because we don't need it. And then maybe you want to add something else. So I'll go over here to blocks and maybe this will be like uh, the about section. And uh, we'll add in a picture or we'll just add in something like this right here. This like, you know, just some, just some filler text. You know, it's just text to fill in the page and give it some structure. And then below that, we'll do the one last one. I don't know, what should we use? Uh, I'll just throw in this one. Let's just, let's just throw in this one, just a random one here. And I'll just import this block as well. And there you go. And then we can design the page as normal. So you can see how we can create a page very quickly, very fast using the Astro blocks. So I would go ahead and use those to uh, build out your websites. And then just remember, once you guys are done, you will then click on updates and that will allow you to save the changes that you made on your website. All right, so now that we created our team, we now need to add it to the menu up here. So let's do that. Go over here to our hey, dashboard. Listen. And then we'll go down to appearance and then we'll click on menus here. All right, and what we're gonna do is that we are now going to select the primary menu. So Astra actually creates a menu for us automatically. If you guys do wanna create a new menu from scratch, you can click on create a new menu. And let's just say, for example, you wanna make this like the, the new menu, right? The new menu. And over here, I'll make this the primary menu, right? And I'll click on create menu. So over here we have pages, right? Uh, we have the home, the about, the contact, our team and services. Now this is if you wanna create a new menu, which you guys can do that if you choose. It doesn't really matter. You can make thousand menus, as many menus as you'd like. So here we have the home, the about, the contact and also we have the our team. So we're now adding the our team uh, section or page to our menu. And then we'll click on save menu. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and take a look here. We actually added the home, the about, our team, services and contacts. And if you go to uh, visit sites, you'll then see we have the home, the about, our team. And this is the actual new page that we created. And you can see that we uh, just added that new page to our menu. So that's how you guys can add pages and also add them to your menu. Now let's talk about mobile optimization. So when you guys are building your website, you guys might want it responsive on all mobile devices. Let me quickly walk you guys through on how to do this. Right here, let's click on edit with Elementor. All right, now at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see this little mobile, uh, I'm sorry, responsive mode. You'll just click on that. Now here we have this tablet and we also have the mobile. So let's first click on tablet. So this is what your website looks like on a tablet device here. Now this website is automatically responsive and it looks good, but there are times where you might need to adjust specific text or elements for specific devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this 
uh, text right here. So I'm gonna click on the edit heading and we're gonna go to style. Now we're gonna click on the topography here and whenever you want to adjust the size of the elements on specific devices, you're going to see this little icon, right? So here we have size, we have tablet, mobile, and we also have desktop. So for the tablet device only, I now want to reduce the size of it, all right? So that's how you can adjust every uh, specific parts of your website um, using this mobile responsive builder. Now there's also another option here. Let's say for example, you might have sections or something that you do not want on the actual mobile or the desktop version. Now, since this is an introduction video, guys, I'm not gonna go into the advanced methods of mobile optimization, but um, there's a lot of things that you guys can do. But uh, one option here is, let's say, for example, I want this, this whole area gone. You know, I don't want it to show on tablet devices, right? I'll click on the entire section. I'll go over to the advanced section. And then for the responsive, I want to hide this on the tablets and also hide this on the mobile. Now you can do this for elements as well. You can do this for sections. You can do this for columns or rows as well. So let's say another example, you don't want this button to show up. I can click on this little edit button, advanced, and I can also hide this specific uh, button as well, just in case I don't want it to show on uh, tablet or mobile. Now we can also go through this and we can keep optimizing this. So if you do want these titles a little bit smaller, here you'll click on the edit image box. And for the style section, you can see now we have all these little icons here. And these are uh, specifically relating to only tablet, right? So over the uh, content box right here, I'm gonna go to the uh, title. We're gonna find the topography. I'll click on topography. And then also we have the size and we can adjust this for tablet. So just for tablet, we are adjusting the size only for the tablet device. So if you guys find that you have text that's breaking or if it's just like, for example, if it's like this and it's just too much text, you guys can always reduce the size of the text to make it optimized for the uh, tablet devices. Now, now that I've showed you guys how to do this with the tablet, now let's talk about the actual mobile device. So over here, I'll click on mobile and we'll scroll up. So personally, I think we can do a little bit of work here, right? Uh, I wanna center align this. And also I think that uh, it's just a little bit too large. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to center this first. So I'll click on the pencil icon. And for the content, uh, here we have alignment. So for the mobile, right, for only the mobile, I want this centered like that. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll change the alignment over here as well under style, mobile, centered. And then for the button as well, here we go, mobile and then centered. And I wanna reduce the size of this text. So for the style here under typography, we're going to reduce the size of this for mobile. All right, that looks a lot nicer. And if we scroll down, you can see this area is grayed out because remember, we actually hit this on tablet and mobile devices. So that's how you guys can um, you know, delete stuff for specific devices, but just going down this website and looking at it, it looks great. In fact, you guys can also run this through the Google checker to see if your website is truly mobile responsive. So let's do that. I'm now going to update this page and I'm going to save it. Now I'll go ahead and put this link in the description. It is a Google, uh, mobile friendly test. So this is the actual page. It is search.google.com. Go ahead and paste this and I'll see if this is mobile friendly. So I'll click on test URL. Uh oh, we got to do a little test here. Oh, you know, I'm not going to add the video. You guys can watch. These things are so frustrating. It says click on the cars. Okay. We got this one verify. Okay. I guess that works. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we got to make wait one minute. All right, cool. So we actually passed the mobile friendly test. So we got the green check mark from Google and it let us know that our website is fully mobile responsive. All right, in this next section, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the theme hey, customizer. Listen. So I'll first be showing you guys how to set a home page to pretty much any page that you'd want. So for example, if you guys made this our team page, right? And you wanted this as your home page, I'll be explaining how to do that. I'll also be showing you guys how to adjust your header and also how to adjust the footer of your website. Cause you guys might've noticed that uh, the page builder is not making the actual header in the footer. So I'll show you guys how to adjust that part of the website. And then I'll show you guys how to get a logo and then how to add it to your website. You guys ready? Let's get started. 
First, let's click on this customize button here. This will turn on the theme customizer. Now, every theme with WordPress has a theme customizer. Remember earlier in the video how I said every theme has different options, like different styling options for the header and the footer? This is where all the themes differ from one another. First, let's go ahead and go to the home page settings. Now, let's say, for example, you guys made like a page and you want to assign that page as your home page. You'll go over here and select a static page and whatever page you want to be your home page, you would just put it there. And now the about us page is our home page, right? Uh, this is useful. So let's say you guys are just getting started out with WordPress and you make a new page. Uh, you would always want to assign that specific page or whatever page you want to be your home page. In this case, it's the home page, right? But I just still need to walk you guys through on how to do that. And then once you do that, you'll just click on publish. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is that we're going to adjust the header. Now with the Astro theme, they actually released a header builder this year. So here we have different elements, right? We have these, um, we have these boxes and then we have these different elements. If you guys want to uh, drag and drop these elements, you guys can do that. For example, we have the primary menu here. And also if you click on this plus icon, we can then go ahead and add in more elements. So here we have a social, which is actually, it's too much here. Here, let's put it on the top right there, right? We got these social icons at the top, or we can even drag those over there to the right side of the page. Um, if you guys wanna have three columns, right? So we'll just put in a secondary menu, and this can be a secondary menu, right? But obviously we have three uh, lines right here, and it's interfering with the actual page builder. So we probably wanna just have like one, you know, one, one row, right? So over here, I'll go ahead and drag in these elements. And then there we go. We have this one column row, which looks really nice. But I'll go ahead and put the site title and logo over there. And also if you want to style these elements, you'll just click on the actual element here. And then you have the uh, options to change the text, the link, and uh, open a new tab if you choose to do that. And then over here, you have the design options. Here you can adjust the text color, the background color, and you can fully design every single element in your menu. Now, obviously I'm not gonna do that because I could easily spend another 30 minutes designing everything in this menu. But I think here that you guys get the point, right? It's very similar to the page builder. You'll just have to go through these options here and adjust these uh, as necessary. Now, one other option I wanna show you all, here we have this little gear icon. And if I click on this gear icon, I can adjust the height of this actual row. And I can also add in a background color or I can even change the position of this. So if you guys do want to design the actual row, uh, this is where you're going to do it with these little gear icons right here. But um, yeah, that is how you guys can modify the uh, header in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and go back over here. And now that I showed you guys how to design the header and the um, menu, now let's talk about how to design the bottom of the website. So we're gonna scroll down right here. And the footer builder is the same thing. So it's just like the actual header. And uh, what we can do is that we can uh, click on a widget here and then we can add in blocks. So uh, there it goes. All right, so we have travel and tourism. And if you wanna add more uh, stuff to this section, we'll click on this plus add a block, browse all. And now you can add in any of these elements here. So if you wanna add in like a button to your block or columns, or you wanna add in more widgets, you guys can do this um, anywhere that you guys want on your footer. I'll just throw in some social icons here and then I'll add the block. So we will add in like a uh, browse all here. So for the social icons, we'll add in like a Facebook, right? And then we have to add in the link, right? So this will just be like the link of your actual Facebook page and stuff like that. I'll click on the plus. All right, cool. And then uh, we'll go ahead and add in another one. Plus, uh, what is it, Twitter? Yeah, I think Elon Musk bought Twitter, right? It's interesting. <laughs> and then you'll have to add in the link here as well. So I'll just go ahead and uh, double click on this. And then we'll also put in the address for your Twitter. And then we'll click on check. So you'll just go through here and add any block that you want. And you can do this for every section. So for this section as well, you'll click on add a block and then you'll do the same process all over again. So this is how you can build your footer from scratch. They did a pretty good job here in making this footer. So if you just do want to adjust this text to uh, your liking, go ahead and go for it. All right, so now that we know the design process of how to build a website, now let's talk about where to get a logo. All right, so there's a few websites you guys can use. There is placeit.net. Uh, these guys can make a logo for you guys that you can legally use on your website. 
Also, Fiverr.com. You can just go to Fiverr.com and put in logo design. And these guys can make a logo for you for as little as $5, right? Uh, you guys will need to make an account, but um, you guys can use the service. It is pretty cheap and they do make some really nice logos. And um, yeah, I actually got my logo from these guys a few years ago and it looks great. There is also logomaker.com. You guys can use this and they will help you get some ideas and inspiration uh, for your logo. So for example, put in darewilson.com and just say I'm in the pet industry. And then they'll go ahead and they'll generate some logos based off your interest. And these guys can actually make tons of logos for you. You can see here how I told them that I want this circular uh, style with the logo below it. So they generated tons of logos for me to choose. Now, the reason why I recommend going to a paid service for a logo like Fiverr or logomaker.com or for Placeit is because these logos you can legally use. If you guys do use free logo maker websites, you legally cannot use those logos. And if someone owns the right to those logos, you guys can get in some serious trouble. So stay away from logo makers or free logo makers and make sure you guys have the full rights uh, for your logo. Here, I'll go ahead and put in uh, darylwilson.com and click on next. Then I'll select some industry here. I'll just say a, a bar. All right, let's, let's select bar. I don't know, bar, that's, that's interesting. Let's check that one out. So now uh, placeit.net, what they're going to do is that they're now going to generate tons of logos for me using the niche and also using the name that I displayed. All right, so here we go. We got some logos they made for us and this is great. So you guys can just go ahead and select the logo here. Um, and then you guys can get some ideas for a logo. I really like placeit.net. I think these guys give you just tons of free ideas. And I mean, they have like over like 10 pages of ideas. So it's really great what this website offers. It's a new service. It is a paid service, but for what you guys get, I think it's like $10 a month or something. It's really, really cheap. So if you guys do need a logo, go ahead and check out any of these websites. Now, once you guys do have a logo, we can actually upload it to our current websites. So let's go back over here to customize and then we'll uh, add in our logo. So over here we have the header builder. Uh, obviously we'll just go ahead and go to the site title and logo. And this is where we can select our logo. All right, now the good thing about Astra is that you guys can actually adjust the size of this. So this is a little bit too big, right? Now I also want to get rid of this display tag. I don't want that. I just want my logo to show. So I'm going to, um, take out the site title, and then we're going to reduce the logo width just to make it a little bit more friendlier. And there we go. We got around, let's just do 51. All right, that looks good, all right? So that's how you guys can add a logo to your website and make it look complete. Now there's one other important option and that is the site icon. So at the top right here, you can see that we have these site icons, right? You wanna make sure that you also do add this to your uh, website. So for the site icon, I also want to add this. I'll click on select site icon. And then I'll also select my logo. And here on the right side, we get this preview, right? So now we can see that there's this preview of our logo. And then I'll click on crop image. And then click on publish. All right, and great. So now you can see that we have our logo there. And if I close this theme customizer, you guys can see that the logo has been applied and also we now have it on our uh, browser. So that's pretty cool. Now let's say for example, you guys wanna create blog posts for your website. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you how to create a blog post for your website. Now before we create a blog post, we need to first create a page for our blog post to display. So up here, I'll go to plus new and I'll click on page. And then for add title, I'll just put blog page or blog or you know, whatever, all right? Blog page, blog, yeah, same thing. I'll click on publish and publish. Now I'm gonna quickly add this to the menu. So I'll go over here to WordPress, appearance, menus, and then I have my primary menu selected. I'll then click on the new page, blog, add to menu. I'll then rearrange it and I'll save the menu. All right, cool. Now over here we have posts. So this is where your blog post will display. Up here at the top, we'll go ahead and click on add new. And for the title, we'll put like a uh, top 10 things girls love about, about men, right? And then right here, we'll just go ahead and put in some dummy content. So you can go ahead and type in whatever you'd like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in some demo content here, right? Now this 
default editor right here. This is called Gutenberg. And with Gutenberg, you can actually build your blog post using either the Elementor page builder or you can use uh, the Gutenberg builder. Now, I'm not going to give you guys a full rundown of Gutenberg because that's a whole nother page builder and that's going to take another, you know, hour or two to talk about. But uh, up here, you'll click on this little plus right here. And this is where you can uh, add in blocks. So for example, uh, let's say for example, oop, let's say for example, you want to add in like an image. I'll click on the image block. And then right here, I can go to media library or I can just upload a new image, right? So uh, I'll go over here and just put something in like uh, this one right here. And then you can also reduce the size of this image as well by clicking on these arrows and then just shrinking it down. And then for the caption, I'll put like our great time in Greece or wherever you want to talk about, right? So uh, yeah, so this is the way you guys can create blog posts for your business. And then on the right side, we have this featured image. This is actually one of the most important parts of the blog post. This is the image that represents the article. So I'll go ahead and click on set featured image. And then I'll just select an image here, set featured image. And you can also create categories for your blog post. So this can be something like, you know, uh, your money or politics or dating. I'll just put uh, dating right here, right? Dating. And then I'll click on publish. So now I'm going to go ahead and publish this blog post. All right, cool. Here, I'll click on view post. And this is our blog post. So we have the featured image right here. And we have the title. We have the uh, category right here who was written by. And then just we have the content right here. And also people can leave content like great article. And there you go. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can create blog posts for your website. Up here, if you click on blog, you might notice this page is empty. So the next thing we need to do is assign the blog post, uh, our blog page to this specific page right here. So let's go over here and click on customize. We'll then go ahead and scroll down to home page settings. And for the blog post page, I'll go ahead and select blog, right? Now with the Astro theme customizer, you can also use the theme customizer here to design uh, this actual blog section here. So right here, I'll click on blog and the blog archive is actually referring uh, to the actual page itself. So right here, I'll click on blog archive and this is where you can add in some design and you can also restrict uh, specific features. For example, if you don't wanna show like the uh, title and the blog meta or if you wanna hide the uh, category and the author, you can just click on this little eye icon right here and now that hid the actual author. And you can always reorganize stuff if you want. You can put the uh, comments on top of the category and you can drag and drop these. So this is how you guys can customize the blog. Now let's say for example, you guys want to design the uh, single post. So I'll click on this actual post here. And this is where you can actually design and customize the single post as well. So you can go ahead and also restrict specific information on the blog post. You can also change the content width and also change the font size of this. So if you want this a little bit larger, you can say, I want this just to be a little bit larger there, like 40 pixels, and I think that's good. And then I'll click on publish up here and I'll close the theme customizer. All right, so that's how you guys can add a blog and blog post to your website. Now, if you guys do want to learn how to create your own web design business from scratch, I do have a video in the description below. It's about six hours. It's a pretty long video, uh, but that'll give you everything that you need to know to start a web design business from scratch. All right, now there's one last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about just before I let you guys go. Uh, if you guys are building your website and you find out that it's just not really good and there's a lot of mistakes you made and you just wanna reset, let me quickly show you guys how to reset your current WordPress websites. Over here, let's go to our dashboard and I have like tons of plugins and stuff over here and everything's like getting glitchy and a little weird, which does happen. Over here under plugins, I'll go to add new and then I'll type in resets. And this is the plugin that we're gonna use. Uh, it's called WP Reset. Just click on Install Now. All right, cool. So now that we've done that, we're gonna scroll down on the left side here and under Tools, you're gonna see WP Reset. Now, if you guys do this, it will delete your entire website. So just make sure that you're sure about this decision because you cannot get anything back. It will delete your website to original factory settings. So over here, I'm gonna type in Reset. Click on Reset Sites and then click on reset WordPress. All right, and now you guys can see on the left side, like everything's cleared up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this box. And then we'll go back to our visit site here. 
And now you guys can see that our website has been completely reset. So you guys can do this just in case you want to also use another Astra Starter template. Hey, now, just as a parting okay. gift, if you guys do want to check out my other videos, uh, this video here, we talk about like the best WordPress themes. So I go in depth and in detail and I scour the internet and I try all these themes and I made my list of the top 10 WordPress themes. They're all free and a lot of them have some really cool features. So be sure to check out this video. I will leave all these videos in the description below. Also, we do have this video here where this goes through and talks about the best free WordPress plugins. And I actually go by category. So we have SEO, image optimization, translations, push notifications, uh, you name it. So there's a lot of uh, plugins that I talk about. And also, if you guys do want to learn how to start your own web design business, you guys can go ahead and check out this video here. It's about six hours long, but there is so much value. I actually uh, co-star in this with another uh, YouTuber. His name is... Uh, what is his name? I forgot. His name is uh, Daniel Scott. Yeah, Daniel Scott. So uh, there's two YouTubers here. We actually teach you how to start your own web design business from scratch. So I highly recommend to check out this video. All right, so congratulations on your website, guys. I really do hope this video helped you guys out. If you guys do have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to all of your comments. My name is Daryl Wilson. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, party people. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hopefully help you guys out. You know, I know when you're first getting started out with WordPress, it can be very intimidating on where to go. So again, I really do hope this video helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I can't promise I'll get to every comment, but I'll do my best. And make sure to like this video. And until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.